watching. Welcome to 2016. Happy New Year. I hope everyone had an amazing holiday season. I know everybody's probably saying it, but I feel like the holidays rushed by so quick. All of a sudden, we're mid-January here, and um, yeah, where did the time go? So I just wanted to bring you guys kind of a list of beauty buzzwords in 2015 or, you know, the big things that were happening in 2015 in the world of beauty. I feel like there were definitely significant things that were happening and um, I just wanted to kind of talk about them and, you know, hopefully we can see them again in some future tutorials. Um, and. You know, let's go through them. Tell me what you guys were loving in 2015. Um, I know this is just a few things, but you know, let's talk about it. Share it. Let's uh, let's have a little beauty talk. So first things first. I think the biggest thing was the highlighting contour, especially highlighting contour palettes. Um, basically, just a really brief overview, highlighting and contouring is kind of sculpting the face, bringing out um, more of your angular features in your face. So, um, you know, my friend calls it skinny face. It's basically darkening um, like the outside, your ridges, your cheekbones, and then bringing forward the center of your face more. Uh, some of the great kits, cat palettes, that came out in 2015 for highlighting and contouring were the Anastasia um, highlighting, con con <laughs> highlighting Contour Palette. Um, basically, the palette includes three highlight shades and three contour shades. And really, you can tell this is very well-loved <laughs> in my house. So um, obviously the ones on the bottom are, are the contouring shades and really um, you want to hit underneath your cheekbones, around the face, again darkening the outside of your face, making the center of your face come forward. Another great um, highlight and contour palette was the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. And I have that here for you. This is a really, really great palette too. I actually have, I got this for Christmas and haven't even used it yet. But again, three contour colors, three highlight colors, just like really smooth, pigmented, really buttery, um, just like really amazing palettes for novices. So in future videos, I definitely wanna do some highlighting and contouring. So um, definitely stay tuned for more of that. It's not going away anytime soon. People were, you know, obsessing when you go into a Sephora you see a whole section full of highlighting and contouring palettes so um, definitely not going in away, away anytime soon but it was a huge huge thing in 2015. Next up along that same vein it's just palettes in general. Um, I feel like palettes ruled the day in 2015 from Anastasia to Kat Von D um, to a bunch of other brands putting out palettes. Urban Decay, obviously, who kind of kick-started that whole game with the naked palettes. Um, a couple of my favorites, again, the highlighting contouring palettes that I just talked about, amazing. Really keep everything together for you, kind of like highlighting and contouring for dummies, which sounds offensive, but, you know, whatever. And then Kat Von D actually had another eye palette come out, which um, which is amazing, which I love. Um, really, really neutral colors that work for everybody, which is amazing. My favorite, though, that came out in 2015 was the Anastasia Self Made palette. If you haven't had a chance to go and pick up one of her palettes, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. So we have... Um, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 14 shadows and a double-ended brush that come in this self-made palette. And the colors are shimmery and matte. Really like a really great range of colors here. Um, <laughs> her Anastasia eyeshadow palette or eyeshadows in general are super, super pigmented, but really, really blendable and really, really easy to use. So I, highly highly recommend the thing with her palettes is they are limited edition so if you don't scoop it up right away you may not ever see it again so it's definitely more incentive to get your butts to Ulta or Sephora and pick one up the value of the shadows I think this was 40 bucks 
for this, but when you think about getting this many shadows for $40 and such a high quality product, it really can't be beat. So run out and get yourself an Anastasia palette if that's the only thing that you do from this video, let you take away Anastasia palette. So <laughs> With uh, highlighting and contouring, later on in the year, especially uh, towards the summer months, um, you know, when you kind of want that fun, light, dewy kind of look uh, in your makeup, what the buzzword strobing came out. That was a super, super big thing that started happening. And strobing is almost like highlighting and contouring plus glitter equals strobing. No, not at all, but it's a way of further accentuating those things that you would highlight. So I've been holding in my hand this Becca highlighter. Um, this is the only highlighter I have. I tend to have a little bit more oily skin, so I'm not really a highlight kind of person. I think it just makes me look greasy, but um, this Becca highlighter, this one is in... Moonstone. <laughs> so this is a really great one. It's really, um, it's not shimmery. It's more glowy, which is what you want in a highlighter. Um, but going back to strobing, obviously, strobing is when you're taking a highlighter, such as this Becca highlighter, and accentuating the face. So, um, you know, a little on the tip of your nose, your cupid's bow, really in this highlighted area here above your brows. Um, these are really uh, the major highlight points and taking on such a pigmented highlighter such as a Becca highlighter is really pulling out those spots and again strobing. You're, you look like a strobe light. That sounds awful. But strobing. So that's definitely more of a summery thing I think that people were doing that um, really making your skin super glowy, super dewy. In the winter, you do you boo. You know, I like a more matte finish to my skin year round. Um, I kind of book the trend in that way, but uh, you know, whatever tickles your fancy, but try strobing, you know, try all of these things. It really, you know, dive in, it really expands your likes and dislikes. You could buy a highlighter and strobe the heck out of your face and decide this is ridiculous and never do it again. But you know what? You tried it. Good for you. So a couple more things <laughs> that I wanted to talk about 2015. Also, besides strobing as a buzzword kind of thing, we also brought baking to the party. And unfortunately, not cupcakes baking your face and that from what i understand is straight out of the drag queen community which yes please um basically baking is a way to set the highlight and contour on your face mostly your contour and set your makeup so you're lasting all night it's you know your hard work is not going anywhere um Baking is basically when you take a loose powder, and I have one here by Laura Mercier, which is a really, really great translucent powder. It's a translucent powder, so the process is more for setting rather than pigmentation or, um, you know, part of the makeup process. So baking is basically when you've highlighted and contoured. I'm telling you, hi highlighting and contour was everything this year. Um, when you take the translucent powder, and with a beauty blender or a stiff brush, you literally just set it on your face underneath your line of your contour or underneath your eyes and just let it sit, let it bake. Uh, and uh, let it sit, it helps set your makeup, it helps clean up your contour, um, it really helps get everything settled and look really, really great. So. Baking is something definitely that you want to try. If you find that your makeup is maybe slipping during the day or, you know, it's just messying at all during the day, you may want to try baking. And like I said, a lot of this stuff I want to 
incorporate in future tutorials. So if you don't exactly know how to do it now, you know, hopefully I can show you later on. And right now it's just about kind of getting those buzzwords down and talking about, you know, what these things are. Maybe you've heard people talk about them and you're like, what? No. Now you know what they are. Last but not least, this product, type of product, I feel like was everywhere this year, more so than any other year that I've seen, and that was liquid lipsticks. So liquid lipsticks are a little bit different, whereas lip glosses tend to be stickier, maybe a little bit um, sheener, and of course lipsticks tend to be, you know, kind of, um, not challenging to put on, but not as precise, maybe not as quick as like a gloss, just slapping a gloss on your lips. You know, there's a little bit more precision with a lipstick. Um, so kind of combining those together, the ease of the lip gloss, so to speak, and the pigmentation of a lipstick is when you get liquid lipstick. And a lot of different companies came out with liquid lipsticks this year. A couple of my favorites, of course, I have to show you. So I have two Kat Von D's. I feel like, I mean, honestly, her makeup line was just huge last year. I, if you haven't had a chance to try her products, it's legit. And when I had first heard about her doing a makeup line, I was like, a tattoo artist doing a makeup line, this is going to be uh, tactastic. But it really wasn't. I, I, the products are amazing. And, um her just her general aesthetic in the makeup world I feel like it's super amazing but whatever so two of her lip glosses ah, liquid lipsticks that I um purchased this year just to give out a little get them all dry um were oh god I can see double dare which is what I actually have on my lips right now and Lolita which is kind of like the big one that she has uh that's basically was the first one and that's if you know her liquid lipsticks you probably know Lolita but um those are the two that I picked up and I really really love them the only thing that I would say with liquid lipsticks just in general is um get ready for a little bit of tackiness on your lips so these last days they're not going anywhere, which is amazing, especially if you know you're going out for a night or you know even at work, we have coffee in the morning, you know you have your lunch, and you don't have to feel that constant need to reapply every ten seconds. Amazing, but it is it does take a little getting to you a little getting used to in terms of the texture of the lipstick on your lips, so just you know be forewarned and then a couple others that I really, really loved this year were from um, Too Faced, and they're the Melted Liquid Lipsticks. So you can, <laughs> these are all kind of in like the same color family. Um, so you can tell kind of like what I like. But um, this is <laughs> a Melted Metallic Peony. Uh, this one is Melted Berry and Melted Fig. So Peony, Berry, Fig. I also have a nude one that I forgot to grab, but I'll just show you. Um, I'll take this melted metal one. This is actually a new one. I've never even used this before. I got it for Christmas from my darling sister. Uh, just with a little swatch, you can see how crazy pigmented that is with a little swatch. And that's fresh out of the bottle. I haven't even used it yet, so. But melted liquid lipsticks are seriously amazing. They will, um, one thing, it's so silly, but when you first put them on, before they've had a chance to kind of set for a second, I have had many of teeth covered in liquid lipstick because they tend to run a little bit when you first put them on. These in particular are fine, definitely not the cap on you, but the melted ones. Just, you know, it comes with a territory, big deal. They last all day and they're amazing and pigmented. So definitely run out and get a Too Faced Melted Liquid Lipstick if you're in the market for one. So that's that. That's my kind of beauty rundown for 2015. The big products, the big uh, buzzwords that were happening in 2015 in the beauty land. 
yeah, I want to do, um, I'm sure you'll see these in future tutorials. I really want to incorporate these into my tutorials. If you guys have anything that you have been obsessed with in 2015 or just ever, you know, I chose 2015 because we're in mid-January already. Let's start off with a little recap. But uh, if you guys have anything that you have really, really loved or that you are just die hard for, feel free to let me know. Leave a comment, leave a suggestion. If you absolutely hate what I was talking about, keep it to yourself. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I hope to see you guys soon in future tutorials. If you have any ideas what you'd like to see uh, in different tutorials, obviously please let me know. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.